to see everyone and worship with you guys. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for allowing us to be here together, God, to worship you. that your Holy Spirit just come down right now, God, and fill this place, God. Lord, 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 prepare our hearts to receive what you want us to receive, God. Lord, with wearing these shields and wearing masks, God, it's not going to stop our worship for you, God. prepare our hearts, God, to worship you, God. Lord, and we lay everything at your feet, God. We just give you all of our situations, God. Lord, and you're just so good and you're so great, God. I thank you for being so gracious for us. And in Jesus' name.
just the voices this morning. come before you in fear and trembling this morning. Lord, for you are holy, you are righteous, Lord. This week, the, the governor and the mayor, they sent out a, a, an executive order um, basically prohibiting uh, singing in, in church services. And uh, I think when I first heard of it, I was upset. You know, my first immediate response was, uh, that's an infringement of our rights. And I was just, I was upset. And then I spent some time uh, really seeking the Lord. And this is what he reminded me of. You know, uh, when you work for the state, the DOT, you know, we run these projects, these construction projects, and with every project, you have a set of standards that you have to follow. Now there's state standards and there's federal standards. Okay. And a lot of times when you have a federal aid project, you have to follow the federal standards. And the federal standards are a lot more strict than the state standards. And so as I was praying this week, one of the things God reminded me of was, Eric, the government is not the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. Amen. And what we have to remember is, you know, sometimes, you know, the government can be led by people who don't know the Lord. So sometimes they'll proclaim things and order things that make you wonder, oh, God, is this the end times? But I think what we have to remember as Christians, too, is if you read the word of God, God's standard is so much higher than the government standard. And so the reason why I'm wearing this ridiculous mask this morning <laughs> is because in my heart, I wanted to rebel. And I wanted to say, no, God, we're just going to do what we want to do. But God reminded me in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. Let your love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. 
and cling to what is good. And in honor, learn to esteem others, learn to love others, learn to value others above yourself. And so the reason why we wear these masks, the reason why we do all these things, these guidelines is to protect the people that we love and to do it in a way that's loving, not just to your brothers and sisters around you, but to those who don't even know the Lord. Because what I believe what God is doing, and, and God is, has different parts of the body that are doing different things, but I believe what God is doing here in Hawaii is he's preparing his people for what's going to come. Because I truly believe that this order without the no singing thing, I think that's going to be a sign of things to come. I think it's an awakening for the church. And I think this is a season where God is not just preparing our actions, but he's preparing our hearts for what's to come. Because if we establish this foundation of trust in God's word, as opposed to just the things that we are routinely doing and the, the habits that we have that are just normal, when we learn to let go of these things, then God is able to mold us into what he needs the church to be moving forward. And so what we hold on to, we don't hold on to the, the rights and the privileges. We hold on to the word of God and we hold on to trust and faith. Amen. And we do it in love. Because you know what I care about? When I get to heaven, what I care about is I, I, I don't... It doesn't matter to me if God says, Eric, thank you for standing your ground about the mass. I want to hear the Lord say, thank you for bringing these souls with you when you came. Amen. And you may or may not agree with me, and that's okay. We can talk after service. But I think what we need to do this morning is we need to spend some time in worship through prayer. I think we ought to pray for our governor. I think we ought to pray for our mayor. I think we ought to pray for the DOE. I think we got to pray for the community leaders. We got to pray for all the churches. We got to pray for our kupunas this morning. We got to pray for those who are suffering, struggling this morning. We got to pray for those who are affected by this pandemic in the name of Jesus, right? We got to pray for those who are affected by not having work and their businesses are shutting down. And instead of trying to choose sides, we need to petition heaven this morning amen and we need to be the people that god called us to be amen, amen. the intercessors not the peacekeepers but the peacemakers amen and so wherever you are you you can sit down if you want to sit down you can kneel if you want to kneel you can you can come up to the altar if you want to come up to the altar i'm going to have these guys just playing and playing in the background and we're going to pray and we're going to petition heaven this morning amen and we're going to come into agreement for god's move today so just wherever you are, just start praying this morning. Whatever God lays on your heart, whoever the Holy Spirit play, uh, lays on your heart, just start praying. Just start praying this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you are who you say you are. Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, oh God. I thank you, Lord, because true worship leads to justice and righteousness, oh God. I thank you, Lord, because true worship is not self-centered, Lord. And so we thank you that as we worship you this morning, Lord, we lift unto you all those who are in authority today. Lord, we want to lift unto you our governor this morning. Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you would bless our brother, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would anoint him through your Holy Spirit, Lord, with the wisdom and the knowledge that he needs to take care of his the people that you've entrusted to him. Lord, I thank you that even now, Lord, we come against every curse spoken over his life in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything, I thank you because you said that you've given us power in our tongue. So we come against every dart, every fiery arrow of the enemy spoken against our governor. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would uh, enlighten his mind. Lord, that you would open his heart. Lord, that he would come to know you as his Lord and Savior, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, he would come to know the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that you would guard his family, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, though, that, that they would not experience shame and guilt, Lord, that they would not uh, walk out into public and feel ashamed, oh God, but you would esteem them, you would value them, you would protect them, you would guard them. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for our mayor. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would strengthen our mayor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would continue to give him the wisdom that he needs 
to lead Honolulu, Lord. We thank you for every mayor on every island, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I declare, Lord, that there would be a unity in the spirit, Lord, that you would pour out the wisdom that they need to come together with the right plan, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you would use, Lord, the, the, the people of God to uphold our leadership in prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you because you have given them uh, you've entrusted them to us as the authority that you've placed above us, Lord. And so we honor them this morning, oh God, by submitting them to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that you would help them, uh, you would bring clarity where they need clarity, Lord, in Jesus' name. We come against the spirit of confusion, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we come against the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bind, Lord, all these spirits that cause us to be fearful, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I ask that you would give them a divine boldness, a divine courage, Lord, that as they make decisions, oh God, Lord, that you would give them a whole heart, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, that they would come to know the support of the people, oh God. Lord, not only will they be encouraged, but they will be empowered in the name of Jesus to lead, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for all those who are in office this morning, oh God. Lord, especially in our state, Lord, all the representatives, Lord, all the state senators, oh God. And we come against all the backbiting in the name of Jesus. We come against all the gossiping and hypocrisy in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come against every word spoken that is not of you right now in Jesus' name. And we ask, Lord, that you would make our state whole. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to lift unto you the DOE and the DOE leadership, oh God. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would give them direction, Lord, on how to lead our children this season in a safe way. Lord, that they wouldn't walk in fear, Lord, but you would give them the wisdom that they need, Lord. I ask for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Lord, when it comes to COVID-19, Lord, we rebuke this, this sickness in Jesus' name, and we ask for your breakthrough, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, as we turn to you with a heart of repentance, Lord, and as we cleave on to you and your righteousness, oh God, we ask that you would heal this land. I thank you, Lord, that you would provide every single need for our young people, for our children, oh God, especially those who are so, uh, distance learning, oh God, those who are mentally, uh, who are who are in need for, for mental health, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, that as they learn uh, distance learning, Lord, that you would provide them with the support system that they need, Lord, to still learn what they need to learn. I ask, Lord, that you would strengthen parents today, Lord, in Jesus' name, especially those who are struggling to find time, Lord, to teach their kids while also working and taking care of the home and doing all sorts of th all their responsibilities, Lord. Would you strengthen our parents today? Lord, would you give them the equipment that they need, Jehovah Jireh? Lord, would you provide everything they need from computers, Lord, to, to internet, Lord, all these resources that they need to, to be able to, uh, to learn. Lord, we come against all anxiety in the home today. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we come against all anxiety in the home in the name of Jesus. All fear, all worry in the home in Jesus' name. Lord, this fear, this anxiety that causes us to turn on one another. Lord, this anxiety that causes us to, to treat our children unfairly. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come against this anxiety right now in Jesus' name. Lord, and we loose your peace, Lord. And you said in your word, Lord, that, do, that we shouldn't be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I ask that even now, Lord, you would pour out your peace in our homes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I lift unto you all those who are released from O Triple C, O God. Lord, and I come against every curse spoken over their life, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I ask, Lord, that you would pour out hope, Lord, hope, Lord, in Jesus' name, that they would come to know your hope, that they would come to know this life-changing, life-giving power that's found through your cross in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, because it's only you that can transform a heart. 
And so I ask, Lord, that you would cover them, you would bless them, Lord. You would help them turn from wicked ways, and Lord, they would turn to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you would strengthen our community, Lord, the body of Christ, Lord, that we would be more loving today than we've ever been before, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to lift unto you all the pastors this morning. Lord, and I ask, Lord, that you would provide discernment, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, every church leader, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would give them discernment, Lord, keen, sharp discernment, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because you said in your word that the harvest is plentiful, Lord, but the harvesters are few. And so I ask, Lord, that even now, Lord, you would raise up a generation. Lord, that is willing to get out of the four walls of the church, Lord, and to bring in souls, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you would bring us back to the basics, Lord, to the fundamentals of our faith. Lord, to go, therefore, and make disciples, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, to spread your gospel, Lord, and to bring souls to you, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, because time is fleeting. And so I thank you, Lord, that this morning you would quicken the church, O oh God. Lord, you would awaken the church, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, that we would set our eyes on the things that your that concern you. I ask, Lord, that you would reveal in our hearts, Lord, people that we need to reconcile with. Lord, those that we need to forgive in our hearts, oh God. Lord, because you said in your word, Lord, that if there is something that we're harboring in our heart, Lord, that we are to leave our, our, our offering at the altar and go and reconcile with our brother, Lord, because that's the worship that you desire. Amen. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would start the work and you would start the work in us. Lord, as we surrender ourselves to you this morning, Holy Spirit, would you have your way in us today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you this morning. Lord, we lift you up this morning. Remove every pretense on our heart, Lord, when it comes to people. Every preconceived thought, every preconceived emotion, oh God, would you make us a clean slate, Lord? Would you refine us this morning, oh God? praise, all thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Two, three, four!
welcome back to Talk Time with Bree and Sarah. I am Bree, your host, and she is Sarah. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to go over our thoughts on Daring Faith. Sarah, do you want to start us off? Well, first of all, I like the episodes. Very nice. So, <laughs> you explain it. You explain it. You explain you it. You explain it's it. It's highlighted on your color. Don't show our secrets in front of the audience. So. <laughs> I can't explain it. We're gonna get fired, Sarah. <laughs> what do you mean fired? I don't even have a job. I mean, this is our job on, right now. I eat Tristitos on the bed and play Animal Crossing. <laughs> I'm unemployed. During Faith is a series we've been watching on Family Service. It's about um, two brothers. So these two brothers are doing a space mission to go to the new moon. Forgot what the company thing was. The blast. Oh yeah, that's what it was called. <laughs> it's unrealistic because it's happening in 2020. And I'll No, be- actually it was 2029. 2029? It said. We'll be 19. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, new moon. Cool. We learned to have faith in ourselves when we don't really believe in ourselves at times. And I, God, Papa, especially, Tita. God, <laughs> Jesus, and Jesus. We have faith in Jesus. <laughs> You're just laughing. I'm laughing at you. At you. Because you're funny. <laughs> because you're funny. Our most memorable moment this summer, despite COVID-19, when my auntie came all the way from Las Vegas, but we can't see her because um, she's in quarantine right now. What's <laughs> yours? What's yours? Sarah. So me and my friend, sometimes uh, we like to go beyond the wall <laughs> on our backyard, <laughs> and we like to go explore the forest behind our house. You never did that with me when I went to your house. That's because there was long grass covering the way and if you don't play pokemon long grass is dangerous you people you beautiful christian people out there do you know what this is (laughs) speak loudly (laughs) loudly Loudly. Mm -hmm. and wear your mask stay safe back to (laughs) school (laughs) no (laughs) back to school it's weird no, uh, I don't really like it. <laughs> I don't like it either, to be Feels honest. Like, yeah. I I just don't like that we have to do Zoom calls on, yeah. like, iPads and, like, For devices. us, it's just WebEx. National Cheap Flight Day. I have no idea where the, what that is, but it sounds like the title. People so. use airplanes? It's been so long. Very long. If you had anywhere to go in the world, where would you go? Cool. Probably uh, Korea. They have fun theme parks there. And BTS merch. Where would you want to go in the world? Brooklyn. Uh, I like Brooklyn, but my father doesn't. Do you want to close the show? Because I've been doing it. Bye. 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 We did this last episode, didn't we? Bye. Everybody all right? Everybody healthy? I want to encourage you, um, if you look in the back when you leave today, there's a prayer wall that uh, some of our, some of the ladies in our church put up, and um, I think it's important for us to get back to praying for one another. Amen. And so they set up a prayer wall over there, and if you have prayer requests, I want to encourage you to stick it on the wall, because every Monday we have intercessory prayer. And it's a good way for our intercessors to come and see what's going on with the church. And also for you, you know, before you go home, take a picture of those prayer requests. Amen. And when you go home, you know, spend some time in prayer. And let's love one another through prayer. Amen. You know, it's important for us to continue praying because, you know, like, you know, when it comes to, for example, everything that's going on in our state, you know, they can take away singing, but they cannot take away worship. Amen. And, you know, you, you, you could take away talking, but you can never take away prayer. Amen. Because uh, if, if our form of worship is, 
If the only worship we have is 20 minutes on a Sunday morning singing three songs in the church building, amen, that's not God's worship, amen. And so we got to get out of that habit sometimes of thinking that, you know, and I'm not, I'm, I don't want you to feel like I'm discrediting like the importance of what we do when we're in the church. But what I'm saying is I think this is a season where God is calling us to take the church outside of the building. Amen. And that means we worship outside the building. We pray outside the building. You know, there's 168 hours in the week. Amen. And, and we spend one hour in church. And that means we have another 167 hours to, to do something with. Amen. And so uh, I want to encourage you when you get a chance, uh, there's also a bowl there. So if you have a prayer request that you don't want posted on the wall for everybody to see, you can put it in the bowl. And I want to make sure people know that we're praying. Amen. But if you have your Bibles, let's go to Romans chapter 12. And I'm not going to keep you for too long. I just want to make sure we look at this scripture, go into this scripture, and I, I want to ask you to go home, take it home, and study it further yourself. You know, when all, when all these things happen, you know, when the, when the order came out with the singing and everything, God reminded me of Amos chapter 5. And if, if you're not familiar with the book of Amos, right, Amos was a minor prophet in the Old Testament, and actually, he was, a, he was a shepherd, is what he was. He was a shepherd, and he was a fig tree farmer. Amen. And one day, this was, this was around the time when Israel, they, they had been delivered from Egypt, and, and some years later, they went in, a, they separated kingdoms. So then there was the northern kingdom of Israel, and then the southern kingdom of Judah. And so this guy, Amos, he was from Judah, the south. And Israel, the northern kingdom at the time, they were under the rule of this king named Jeroboam II. And this king was an evil king. Amen. So, you know, this king, he, he, he expanded Israel's territory. You know, he, he increased Israel's wealth. You know, and he, he established all these temples for Israel. But what happened was because they were growing so wealthy, you know, they started to be apathetic. You know, they started to ignore you know, God. So even when they built temples, you know, this king, he built two temples to rival uh, Solomon's temples. But in the temple, he put idols. There were statues of Baal, you know, all these things. And so, you know, God, he, he used Amos to bring a word to, to Israel this season. And, and the word that he was want, supposed to share was, um, long story short, this is what God said. God says, I hate your worship. Because what was happening was they were offering sacrifices in the temple, yet there was people that were poor that were being oppressed. You know, they were, they were, they were worshiping in the temples, but there were those who were being uh, taken advantage of. And basically what God was reminding us of is, you know, his heart is when it comes to worship, true worship is not just the singing of the song. It's not just when you're in church, but real worship it's, it's not real worship it's if it's disconnected from your relationships with people. Your worship and your relationships are always connected. That's why the Bible tells us in Matthew, you know, before you bring your offering to the altar, you know, leave it at the front and make sure you go reconcile with your brother. You know, so when it comes to singing, if they take away your singing, then it's time for the church to be awakened to what else worship is. You know, because the type of worship that God is looking for is the worship that leads to his justice and his righteousness. Amen. And simply put, he, he led me to Romans 12. So if you want to turn to Romans 12, we're going to read this real quick. And then we'll close. Romans chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love and honor one another above yourselves. And so I just want to share a few quick things. When the Bible talks about love must be sincere, you know, in other versions, the Bible says, uh, make sure your love is not hypocritical. You guys know what hypocrisy is? What is hypocrisy? Fake, right? Simply put, you know, phony, 
You know, you ever been around phony people? You know, I think, uh, and I want to take it just a little bit deeper because God was convicting me this week. You know, there was this, there was this young man that uh, he had called me, you know, and, and it's funny, like, I, I'm, and I want you to know, like, God is still dealing with my heart when it comes to a lot of things. You know, Saturdays are normally like our family days. And so I try to make sure, you know, when it comes to Saturday, I'm spending all my time with Rachel and the kids. And so sometimes I'll turn my phone off or, you know, sometimes I'll put my stuff away so I can focus on my family. And there's this one Saturday where someone called me. It was like later in the evening. And he's like, Eric, I have an emergency. You know, I, I might need to go to the hospital. You know, and in my heart, I was like, oh, man, it's Saturday. You know, God, what am I supposed to do? You know, what am I going to tell Rachel? And in my heart, there was already a pretense, you know, when it comes to loving this brother. You know, and then when you, when you see, so I, I encourage him, hey, come down to the church, let's meet. So we're here talking. And the first words that come out of my mouth are, hey, God bless you. It's good to see you. And God was just reminding me in my heart, like not once did I ever mention God. You know, but what happens is we have this routine sometimes when, when we're in front of people that, that these Christianese words just come out even though our heart isn't aligned with our words. Are you with me this morning? You know, like we say things, hey, brother, I love you. But in our hearts, when, when we're not in front of them, we're like, oh, man, I don't want to see you right now. And what I'm saying is it's just what God was dealing with in my heart as well. He said, love must be sincere. You know, it, Rachel, where Rachel's uh, mom is from, she's from Louisiana. And down south, they have this thing called Southern Hospitality. Amen. And if you've ever been to Louisiana, oh, it's one of the kindest places you could ever go. Right. But the, the, the problem sometimes with this idea of Southern Hospitality is, you know, people tend to practice it in principle but a lot of times it's not practical. And what I mean by that is when you're used to, you know, just when you're in front of people and you're very respectful, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you know, but in your hearts when they're not in front of you, oh, dude, I can't believe this guy was talking to me. You know, we put on these masks sometimes and our love becomes hypocritical. And so the, what I'm trying to say this, and please, I don't want you to feel like I'm just trying to throw darts. I'm not. What I'm trying to say is I think what God is trying to deal with is our hearts this morning. Not just the actions, but the heart behind it. Because I think God this season is looking for authentic love today. You know, this agape love that learns how to honor and esteem people. Amen? Are you with me this morning? You know, the Bible says, if you continue reading, that we are to uh, hate what is evil and cling to what is good. And so I think the, when it comes to hating what is evil and clinging to what is good, it reminds me of holy fear. You know, we need to operate with a spirit of holy fear today. And not just holy fear that something is going to happen to me if I do something wrong, but the holy fear that learns to run away from what is evil and truly cleave on to what is good. You know, when the Bible talks about cling on to what is good, you know, it uses the word cleave. Where, where have you heard cleave before? Right? In your marriages, right? The Bible says that you are to, you are to um, release from your, your parents and you are to cleave onto your spouse. Right? This idea of cleave has to do with, a, it's like concrete. You know, you guys ever work with concrete? You know, when, you, when, you, when you're working with concrete and you put something in concrete, once that concrete sets, it's there. It's permanent. Amen? And so when it comes to cleave, we got to learn how to cleave onto what is good. We got to learn how to separate right, what is evil and what is good. We got to learn how to uh, discern what the enemy is and, and who we're up against. Amen. I wish I could go in deeper. Maybe this Wednesday we'll, we'll do a, a Bible study. But I, the reason why I bring this up, and I don't want to go into too much right now, because, you know, holy fear has to do with your anointing. You know, when we don't operate in holy fear, then we walk outside of God's anointing. And really what I want to encourage you with is this. If you want to be a people who love authentically, you really grow these this quality in two ways. 
Number one, it, it starts with your, your worship. It starts with your relationship with the Lord. As you continue to draw near to God, you'll love people and you'll love people well. And so when it comes to worship, I just want to encourage you, worship is not just the singing, the 20 minutes in the morning that, that we spend together. Right? Worship is what we do at home. And this is the season where we need to start building altars of worship at home. Right? I, I, I'm reminded of... Um, you know, with my daughters, you know, part of my responsibility as a father is to make sure that I'm guarding the things that come into her ears and the things that come in through her eyes. And so that I'm, I'm guarding like the, the things that she watches, the things that she hears, right? We're a boring evil. We're also clinging on to what is good. That means I need to start playing worship music at home. I need to teach my daughters what real worship is. Amen. What it means to be in the presence of God. Amen. So in order for us to love people authentically this season, it starts with having a, a, an intimate relationship with God outside of the church as well. So that's one. And number two, if we're going to love authentically, we need to start. Um, seeing people the way God sees people. And this is what I want to leave you with. And, I, and this is what I truly believe God's been dealing with in my heart as well. You know, if we want our love of righteousness and our hatred of evil to grow, it grows when we grow in love and compassion for those whose lives are being destroyed by sin. And I want to leave you with that this morning. And I'm going to ask you to take some time to take it home and pray about it. But, you know, we grow in authentic love when we learn how to have love and compassion for those whose lives are being destroyed by sin. And I think we just need to take it back to the perspective that God needs us to have. Amen? That it's not just what we think and what we want, but we're held to this standard when it comes to God. As Christians, we have a, a responsibility to love differently. We have a responsibility to forgive differently, to live differently. Amen? Are you all right this morning? Let's pray. want to humble ourselves before you, Lord, and we want to thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you pour out over each and every one of us, oh God. Lord, we just release all expectation to you this morning. Lord, I thank you, Lord, because there is power in your gospel. I thank you, Lord, because you saved us for a reason. And I ask, Lord, that this season, Lord, you would help us to walk in purpose. Lord, you would help us to be aligned with your heart and your will. Lord, that you would be pleased by the way that we love those around us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that our love would be sincere. Lord, that we would cling on to what is good and abhor what is evil. I thank you, Lord, because you don't just care about the outer things, Lord. You care about our holiness. Lord, you care about our righteousness. And Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would help us to esteem one another above ourselves, Lord. especially our family. And so I thank you for the work that you're doing in our homes. 
And I ask, Lord, that you would continue to bring revelation, Lord, as we spend time in your word this week. Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would speak to us directly. A word in due season, Lord, a word that would transform our hearts and our minds. And so we thank you, Lord. We, we, we glorify you, Lord, and we thank you for giving us this time to be together. Lord, and as we go home, Lord, I ask, Lord, for your hedge of protection, Lord, that you would keep us safe, oh God. And as we go throughout this week, as we go to work or as we uh, stay at home, oh God, I ask, Lord, that you would continue to open our eyes to opportunities to love people and to love people well. So, Lord, we want to thank you for these things. We love you, Lord, and we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.